بسم اللہ والحمد للہ السلاۃ والسلام علیہ رسول اللہ ام آباد رب شاہ علی صدری ویسلی عمری بہل العدتم السانی اقبولی السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر بردرس ٹوڈے ان شاء اللہ وی آر اسٹارٹنگ اے نیو سورہ سورہ لقمان اینڈ وی ول ٹرائی ٹو ان شاء اللہ کمپلیٹ آر اسٹڈی آف دس سورہ اینڈ اٹ ہیز تھرٹی فور آیاز سو ویل ٹرائی آر بیسٹ ٹو کور دا انٹائر سورہ ان ٹو ڈیز کلاس ان شاء اللہ جسٹ لائک ایوری ادر کلاس وی ول ہیو اے کوئک کوئک introduction of uh, uh, surah luqman and then we will go directly into today's lesson so this surah uh, is believed to be revealed in makkah in the middle period of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's uh, stay in the entire makkan period um, as i mentioned before it has 34 ayas the surah takes its name from aya number 12 um, hazrat luqman is believed to be from ancient times some say he was from the african origin or from arab religion uh, arab origin uh, he was known for his wisdom and piety and in this surah specifically allah subhanahu wa taala captured the lessons that luqman gave to his son and those are the lessons that are that have been captured in quran until the end of times for all of the humanity to benefit from uh, as i mentioned it's, it was revealed around the middle stage of Uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam's stay in makkah um, around the same period as surah ankabut that we went through earlier and both of them carry uh, similar topics um luqman is telling his son that the worst sin is polytheism we cannot do shirk this is just one of the many pieces of advice that uh, luqman gave and we will see the full list of uh, advice um amongst those one key uh, advice was also related to be good to your parents even if and this is a message that we get be good to your parents even if they are from another religion they are the ones who raised you and carried you in your weakness when you were born you were so helpless your mother um carried you inside her body and she became weak she faced a lot of hardships and then she went through the pain of labor and then she fed you her breast milk for 2 years or 3 years or more so you have to be good with your parents the only time you can be disobedient but still you have to be respectful the only time you can be disobedient is if they ask you to do something against the guidance of allah subhanahu wa taala or the, any thing that is related to the hadith of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if they ask us to go against the quran or sunnah of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then we can di- we can be disobedient however we have to remain respectful in that case as well and then uh, towards the end of the surah we will see how allah subhanahu wa taala uh, created this entire universe and everything for mankind and his signs are everywhere for us to believe and there are multiple things that are that have been discussed so far even in our lessons um uh, from rain to agriculture to vegetation everything is showing us a sign from allah subhanahu wa taala okay so let's start today's lesson auz billahi minash shaitanir rajeem بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الف لام ميم these are the opening letters of the surah like in many other multiple surahs we study the meaning of these letters are only known to allah subhanahu wa taala there are many uh, scholars who have tried to come up with the logic of maybe this these means that this or that but we don't have this explanation So um, our belief is that these the meanings of these words are only known to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Tilka ayatul kitabil hakim. These are verses and these are signs of the book of wisdom which is a wise book. And wisdom we have discussed previously as well. The difference between knowledge and wisdom is wisdom means that you will act on that knowledge. So the wise people are when a knowledge is shared with them they start acting on it immediately as well and we know it's a book of actions it's also al furqan quran al furqan means something that tells you what is good what is bad what to do what not to do so there is a lot of actionability we it's all about being a practical muslim you cannot just acquire knowledge and don't do anything about it and then continue to live your life as you want no it's the book that is full of wisdom which means that we have to take a lot of actions in our lives as well as muslims we have been asked specifically what to do and what not to do hudaun wa rahmatan lil muhsinin a guidance and a mercy for the good doers so the people who have good intention they are the ones who really benefit from this guidance they take it as a mercy when you apply islam and when you become a muslim 
you see the benefits and blessings of um, uh, of of this guidance in this life as well as inshallah we will be rewarded uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the afterlife if we try our best to live our lives according to his guidance now the definition of muhsineen is also coming so here we see a guidance and a mercy for the good doers for those people who are muhsineen and in the next ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is telling us the qualities of muhsineen who are the good doers those who establish the prayer, five times mandatory prayer, and give zakat, the charity that we give, um, there, is a, there is a stipulated percentage, two and a half percent that you have to give on your hoarded wealth. This is zakat. And this is something. So they give zakat, they help the poor and the needy, and they believe firmly in the hereafter. This is a very, very important point. Who are Mohsinin? Who are the good doers? Who establish prayer? Five times mandatory prayer. And then they give zakat. That means they help the poor and the needy. And then they believe firmly in the hereafter. Those are on guidance from their Lord. And those are the successful ones. Success when, when Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention success, that means in this world as well as in the hereafter. And the hereafter is a lasting life that will not end. So the success of the hereafter is the ultimate success for any human being that, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent in this world um, to live their lives as a test. And then they either get the reward or the punishment. So the, truly the successful ones, um, they are on guidance from their lords. Now, just to recap, um, who can tell me, based on what we just learned, what is the definition of a successful good uh, good doer? Who are Mohsinin? Anything that comes to your mind? Anyone? Who are Mohsinin? We just read it. You can unmute yourself or you can write on chat. Who are the good doers? Okay, I got an answer in the chat. Yes. Jazakallah khairan shayros, those who establish prayer five times a day, those who give zakat, there is another message, those people who follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders or guidance, that's correct, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator, he has created us, he knows how we should operate, and for us to better operate, he sent down Quran as a guidance, and those who follow that guidance, Jazakumullah khairan, thank you so much, um, establish prayer, give zakat, and believe Firmly in the hereafter. Now, the important thing here I just want to highlight, which is the part, the last part. What is the meaning of believing firmly in the hereafter? How a person behaves if he believes firmly in the hereafter? This is a very, very important thing. When you believe in the hereafter and you know that when I will die, I will be held accountable. I will be asked that the guidance was sent to you. What did you do about it? So when you know that someone will question you, then you're always conscious. You're always conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will try your best to keep him, keep him happy. And how you will try your best to keep him happy is by following the good deeds and by following the instructions, as you guys also mentioned earlier. Jazakumullah khairan. So by following the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also by abstaining or stopping yourself from doing something that may uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not like or that that is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us not to do. So when you love someone or when you like someone, you're always conscious. Oh, I don't want to offend this person. I don't want them to get angry with me. I want to make them happy. Same thing is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if we truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will try our best to please him. We will try to stop ourselves from things that he does not like or he has asked us not to do. So this is the same relationship we need to have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to be truly successful, for us to be amongst the muhsineen who are the good doers. So I hope this point is clear. Moving forward. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَحْوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُذِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمِ and of mankind is he who purchases idle tales to mislead from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge. 
and make takes it into ridicule. Now coming to the other people. First, we got the definition of who are the good people, who are the good doers, who are the most sinin. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about those who are on the wrong side, wrong path. What do they do? They are amongst the mankind who take false tales. They just take false stories that have no meaning to mislead others from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they make fun of the knowledge or the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has had. Oh, so there will be who's Oh, so we'll go to Jannah. Oh, okay. So, okay, so after we die, we're going to uh, wake up again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rise us up again from our graves. How will that happen? So they start to make, of, make fun of these concepts. Those for them is a humiliating punishment. It's not a normal punishment. You know, when you are in school and in exam, you can get different types of punishments. And uh, Teachers can give like different punishments, right? But there are some punishments that are humiliating, that humiliate you. And that reminds me of, a, of an interesting story I can tell you. Um, you know, when we were in school and uh, there were some teachers and there are different ways for teachers to restrict the students, right? I know these days it doesn't happen. But, you know, in our time as well, uh, when I was in school, um, some of the teachers, they used to hit you. Some of the teachers were angry at you. They will be shouting at you if you're not listening, if you're making noise. There was one of these teachers whom I still remember. So we used to wear a tie in our school. And what he used to do was, he used to take the tie. And he, if you're not listening to him, he would just ask you to come close to the door. He would take your tie and take it, the tie, and uh, just, you know, tie it to the door knob. So he would tie it. So you're like standing and, you know, you're just beside the door. Everybody's passing and they're laughing and they're looking at you because you're looking like you're a, a, a camel or a sheep or, a, you know, some kind of an animal tied to the door. And this used to be so humiliating. People used to dread this punishment. So the point that I'm trying to make here is it will not just be a punishment. It will be a humiliation. People will be ashamed. They will be thinking, why did we do this? Why did we not follow the guidance? Why were we making fun or... Um, ridiculing the guidance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make sure that he humiliates you um, on the day of judgment and afterwards. So it will not be like a normal punishment. It will not just be pain. It will be, you will be going through humiliation. You will be cursing yourself. You will be thinking why. You will have a strong, strong regret. So those people who are on the wrong path and who used to tell stories to mislead people and make fun of the guidance and say, ah, okay. At the end of the day, they will get a severe humiliating punishment. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect it from us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us on the right path. Amin. وَإِذَا تُطْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا وَاللَّا مُسْتَكْبِرًا كَأَلَّمْ يَسْمَعْهَا كَأَنَّا فِي أُذُنَيْهِ وَقْرًا And when I recited to him our verses, he turns away arrogantly as if he did not even hear, hear them, uh, heard them, as if there is deafness in his ears. So these are the people who are on the wrong path. When somebody is reciting them or telling them something good, talking to them about Islam, talking to them about guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they become arrogant. Ah, oh, don't even talk to me about this or I'm not even listening. And you know, when you are in arrogance and when you are full of yourself, you don't even consider the guidance. You don't want to consider the guidance. There's something on the chat. Assalamu alaikum from Usaid wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay. So these are the people who are arrogant. So first of all, they were making fun um, of the verses and they were sharing false stories. Those are the ones Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said will get humiliating punishment. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, guidance or signs or verses are recited to them, these ayahs are recited to them, they become arrogant and they just walk past as if they're not even hearing. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبَشِّرْ هُوْ بِعَزَابِ نَلِينَ so give him tidings of a painful punishment. So they will have a severe, severe punishment. Previously it was said they will have a humiliating punishment. And now it's a very painful punishment. So who will tell me who will get humiliating punishment? What are the signs of a person who will get a humiliating punishment? Just quickly if you were to recap. Whatever comes to your mind, whatever you remember from the previous conversation. You can write it in chat. You can unmute yourself and you can say, yes, or say it. Go ahead, please. I didn't listen. I wasn't here for the whole meeting, but from like 
the one minute that I have. No problem. No problem. We will just, which is why it's good that we will repeat it. No worries. So, is anyone it, else? Is it the arrogant people? Sorry? Arrogant people. Yes, arrogant people. Excellent. So, yes, you captured it right. So, these are the people who are arrogant. But before this, there was another point. Who will tell me? Before about, arrogant people. About the arrogant people. Sorry, you said your your voice is not clear. Can you repeat, please? No, I, I don't know about that because I just... No problem, no problem. So we'll just repeat it quickly. So, who will get humiliating punishment are people who spread false stories and turn away arrogantly. So the point of arrogance, or say, Jazakallah khairan, you captured well. So when you joined us, yes, we talked about these are the arrogant people. They are so arrogant that they're not even listening to the guidance. They don't want to even listen to the guidance. But before that, we saw the mention of those people who say false stories. They spread false stories to mislead people. Oh, so you believe in this? Oh, you believe in who? Oh, you believe in heaven and the hell? Okay, really? And by the way, these people are not just non-Muslims. They are amongst Muslim families. They are born Muslims, but they don't, they're not practicing Muslims. We have to realize the difference between people who are born Muslims, who may be billions in the world, but there are very few practicing Muslims. We have to associate ourselves. We have to make friends with good practicing Muslims who are trying to be better Muslims every day. And they are hard to find, by the way. Because even Quran says there are only few who are on the right path. Multiple times we have discussed them. Um, yes, Shero, Jazakallah khairan. Those who spread false stories to mislead people from Islam. Jazakallah. I just read the chat from Shahroz. You are spot on. Okay. So I hope this point is clear. Moving forward. Inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihati lahum jannatun naeem. Indeed, those who believe and do righteous deeds, those who do good deeds, for them there are gardens of delight. There will be delightful gardens, which means heaven. And they will continue to delight them. The, the the fun and the delight and the satisfaction from heavens and those gardens will continue to grow. It will be never ending. So people, uh, those people who will be entering into heaven or Jannah, they will never get bored of it. There will be something exciting coming all the time for them. fiha. They will be abiding in it forever. So this, it's not like this life where people are trying to enjoy everything and they are fulfilling all their desires by good means or bad means. They're getting this well. They're doing corruption and they're having fun and partying and all of that. This life will end. And the purpose of this life was not to do this. The purpose of this life was, yes, you can fulfill your desires. You can live a good life. You can be wealthy. You can, you have to help others and everything. But there are certain boundaries. You have to do certain things and not do certain things. When you do this, you get rewarded for the ultimate reward, which is the never ending life. They will be abiding in it forever. This is the statement or these three words. I hope you all are with me and looking at the screen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is saying in the Quran, the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true. And he is the almighty, all wise. Moving forward. Khalaqat samawati bi ghayri amdin amadin taraw naha wa alqa fil ardi rawasiya antamida bikum wa batha fiha min kulli dabba. He created the heavens without pillars that you see and has cast in the earth firm mountains lest it might shake. So mountains, the role of the mountains which is now proven by science is to hold the earth. So they are like these pivots on the earth that hold it. Uh, with you and he dispersed in it from every creature now and he has created a lot of creatures and a lot of creation uh, within the earth so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting these signs for us to look at this all around us and then start believing and we sent down from the sky water we caused to grow then therein of every noble kind so this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sustaining life with rain, with vegetation, with all the creation. And we know there are multiple life cycles. There is a water cycle and there are multiple life cycles of all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is keeping and sustaining life as we go through. 
هذا خلق الله فأروني ماذا خلق الذين من دوني This is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So show me what those have created who you worship besides him. So this is all signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The false creator that you reach out to, show me what have they done. So all the gods that you have and the other gods that you have, what have they done? بَلِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي ظَلَالِ مُبِينَ Nay, is nay, the wrongdoers, they are in clear error. So the wrongdoers are in a clear, clear error and they cannot... Uh, okay, sorry, just a second. Yeah, there is some disruption. Okay. Sorry, just a second. Okay, we will continue. And I think it's okay. I mean, if somebody is trying to cause disruption, I have uh, already muted the participants. Apologies to those of you guys who are contributing. Um, I think you can continue contributing on the chat. I will be looking at the chat, inshallah. So don't worry about uh, the people who came in and caused disruptions. Let's focus ourselves on the lesson. So, هَذَا خَلْقُ اللَّهِ فَأَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونِي بَلِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي ظَلَالِ مُبِينَ This is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So show me what have those who have created. So those who you follow, you create. Uh, they, what have they created? No, the wrongdoers are in clear error. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ And verily we gave Luqman the wisdom that be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِ And whoever is grateful, then only he is grateful for himself. The benefit of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only for the person who is being grateful. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of no one. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ And whoever is ungrateful, then indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of any need and he himself is praiseworthy. So he doesn't need uh, anything. Yes. So I see some messages coming in on the chat. Guys, don't worry about the other spammers and it's fine. They can stay in the class. It's okay. We've already muted the class. Stay focused. And uh, in case you have anything to mention related to the class, you can mention it on the chat. Don't worry about the other people who have joined the class. Okay. Uh, just a second. Ah, okay. Okay, just a second. Um... Second, yes. Okay. Apologies for the disruption. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us. So from ayah number 12 until ayah number 19, we have lessons from Hazrat Luqman, as we mentioned that uh, earlier when we started the surah, and the name of the surah is Surah Luqman. Um, he was a wise uh, uh, man from ancient times. Some of the uh, some of the scholars believe that he was um, uh, he was uh, an Arab. Some of them uh, believe that he was in the uh, in the African uh, from the African descent. So these are the people. Uh, just a second. Okay, so it's clear now. Yeah. So guys, please don't worry about. Um, the uh, the the rowdy audience who joined, it's okay. I mean, we can focus on our lesson. Okay. Um, so now we are from, from this ayah number 12 until ayah number 19. We will try to cover the lessons that uh, Azad Tukman gave to his son and he passed uh, on. And these have been captured that we discussed until the end of times for all of us. 
walaqad atayna luqmanul luqmanal hikmata anish kurillah kurillah and verily we gave luqman the wisdom that be grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa may yashkur fa inma yashkuru li nafsi and whoever is grateful then only he is grateful for himself we only benefit by thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need it wa man kafara fa inna allah ghaniyun hamid and whoever is ungrateful then indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of any need he is the one who is praiseworthy he doesn't need anyone to thank him wa is qala luqmanu li abnihi wa huwa ya'izuhu ya bunayya la tushrik billah and when said luqman to his son while he was instructing him oh my son do not associate partners with allah in shirka la zulmun azim indeed associating power, uh, partners with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is surely a great injustice wa wasaina al insana bi walidai and we have enjoyed upon man for his parents hamaltahu hamalathu ummuhu wahnan ala wahnu ियंस Towards me is the destination. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that you have to all return, and then you will be accountable how you treated your parents, how well did you respect them. Wa in ja ja hadaka ala antushrika bi ma laisa laka bihi ilmun fala tute huma wa sahib huma fi dunya maarufa. Now the only case where we don't have to follow our parents, but if they strive against you, on that you associate partners with me. So if they are misguiding you and asking you to do shirk, what not you have of it any knowledge? Then do not obey and both of them, but accompany them in the world with kindness. You have to still be kind to them, even if they ask you to be uh, to work um, uh, against the guidance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If they ask you to do something, then you can politely refuse them and say that I will not be able to do it. However, you have to stay respectful. There is no case. there is no situation where you can be disrespectful to your parents or where you can be angry with your parents even in the case when they are misguiding you or asking you to do something against the will of allah subhanahu wa taala then you have to be polite and kind and respectful you don't have to follow them because obviously it is against the orders of allah subhanahu wa taala and guidance of allah subhanahu wa taala but you still have to be polite and kind to them this is a very very important point what the be sabila man anaba ilayya and follow the path uh, of him who turns to me so the follow the people who are following or who are on the right path thumma ilayya marjukum fa ambiukum bima kuntum ta'malun then towards me is your return then i will inform of what you used to do allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is according everything ya bunayya innaha in taku mithqala habbatin min khardalin fatakun fi डॉट and be it in a rock or in the heavens or in the earth allah will bring forth it so you cannot hide anything from allah subhanahu wa taala all your deeds are getting captured everything is getting recorded even like a dot of a seed even if you hide it anywhere in the world of course it's very difficult to find right if somebody hides a dot of a mustard seed under the rock or in the mountain or in the forest and you are you are asked to let go and find probably you will spend your entire lives and you'll in hundreds of years not you cannot find it but allah subhanahu wa taala is saying nothing is hidden from him so even if you were to hide any deed or you're trying to escape from something allah subhanahu wa taala has the power he is all knowledgeable it will be brought forth in allah latifun khabir indeed allah subhanahu wa taala is all subtle all aware ya bunayya qim salata wa wa wa'mur bil ma'ruf wanha anil munkar oh my son establish a prayer and enjoy in the right meaning 
support what is right and forbid from the wrong or forbid from evil. Wasbir and be patient. Alama asabak over what befalls you. When you are in a tough situation, when you face a challenge, be patient. In nazalika min azmil umur. Indeed, that is of these matters require very strong self determination. Establishing the prayer five times. It requires determination. It's not easy to wake up in the fajr, especially during the winters, and make your wudu and go to the mosque and then pray and come back. Five times prayer can become a challenge for some people. For some people, it may be easy. Then there are other challenges to enjoin the right, to say the right thing, to stop people if they're doing wrong thing. These things require determination because people can turn against you if you're following this guidance, if you're trying to do this. So, Amar Mil Maru, Vanha Anil Munkar, it's very difficult these days. When across everywhere, you see so many people doing so, so, so many wrong things. So how do you go about it? So it requires a strong determination. And then, wasbir ala ma asabit, meaning when you are faced with the difficulty, when you have those testing times, then doing sabr, it's easier said than done. It's very difficult. So indeed, these are the things that require very good determination. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us that if you are following the guidance or not, and do not turn your cheek from men and do not walk in the earth exultantly. Meaning, don't be like, you know, when people are like arrogant and they're walking as if, you know, they are something and they're looking at people that, you know, they are inferior. You have, you're full of arrogance. Don't do that. This was a specific instruction from Luqman to his son. In Allah, la yuhibbu kulla muqtarin faqood. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like any, every self-conceited boaster. The word self-conceited boaster is very strong. This means that you are full of yourself and you just talk about yourself. I am this, I am that, I have achieved this, I have achieved that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like arrogance. Because when you become self-conceited, meaning when you are looking at yourself, I am the best, I have achieved this. I have this skill. I am so experienced. I am better. I am great at this sport. I am good at this subject. I am, you know, whatever. I'm so smart. This means that you're full of yourself and you're trying to look down upon others. You have become arrogant. Boaster. Boaster means when you talk, when you cannot stop talking about yourself, you endlessly talk and then you exaggerate. Even when you have achieved something or not achieved something, you're just boasting about it. You're just exaggerating. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like such people. Waqsid fi mashika wa azuz min sauti. And be moderate in your pace and lower your voice. Inna ankarad aswati la sautul hamir. Indeed, the harshest of all sounds is surely the voice of the donkey. So Allah SWT is saying that, um, yes, it is selfishness. Thank you so much, Usaid. Jazakallah khairin. It is uh, selfishness. So, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like people who are loud and they are screaming. So you have to lower your voice. You have to be respectful. And the harshest of sound, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comparing it to a donkey. Now you look at this. This is beautiful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created donkeys. And one can say, how come donkeys have such a voice? Why is it so annoying? I don't know. I mean, if you guys have not heard the donkey's voice, then just um, uh, search it on YouTube and you will get many flavors of it. <laughs> but the point is, why is it so much annoying? And now you get the wisdom of this, that this is a comparison. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even showing us in front of us live as an example, as a case study. Don't be like a donkey. Don't be that loud. Don't be that annoying. So that was even created as a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to correct our way. So this, this is from ayah number 12 until 19, a full list of instructions that was given by Luqman to his son. I have tried to capture them in the next slide for, uh, for us just to remember the 10 lessons. So be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is free from all needs. And of course, we have been told not to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always be respectful to, to your parents. Be obedient to them unless they go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. If they go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kindness, then you don't have to be obedient to them. But still, you have to be respectful, you have to be kind. So, which is why the always respectful part is there. But obedience is something you will only follow them as long as their instructions are in line with 
the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long and, and if they give you any instruction against it, you don't have to follow it, but you have to be polite, kind, and respectful. Follow the path of people who follow guidance. All deeds will be held accountable, even the size of a mustard seed. So even if you have a dot mustard seed and that deed, and you try to hide it anywhere in the world, it seems very it seems like impossible that someone can find it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will even bring it forth because he has the absolute knowledge of everything. Nothing can be hidden from him. And then the three instructions that require strong determination. So this is like a three in one. Point number six has three instructions. Establish prayer, number one. Always enjoin the right and forbid evil. Amar bil maru nahi anan munkar. So you have to do the right thing. Um, ask people to do the right thing and then you have to stop them from doing the right thing and you have to tell them not to do the right thing so uh, not to do an evil thing so this is the second one established prayer was number one number two was always enjoying the right meaning help the people who are doing right encourage them who are doing right and forbid evil number two number three and be patient in tough times when a challenge comes when a tough situation comes you have to be patient as a muslim and you have to pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take you out of it these three are together in point number six. They require determination. They, this is the test. They require you to be patient and this requires determination being a Muslim. And establishing prayer is very, very important. Five times prayer is mandatory. It requires determination. For some people it is easy who have made it a habit. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may continue that consistency for some of us who are still struggling or who are not able to pray five times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. And give us that uh, motivation and excitement that we um, uh, establish the prayer five times because it's mandatory. And similarly, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to enjoy the right and forbid evil and give us that determination. And when or if tough times comes, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us patience. So these three require determination. Then don't be arrogant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like self-conceited boaster, someone who's selfish. As Usaid also mentioned in the chat, so Allah SWT doesn't like uh, a self-centered person who boasts, who says things like, you know, I am this, I am that, and all of that. And then, last, be moderate in your pace, lower your voice. Worst of voices is that of a donkey. So we have a we have an example, we have a case study in front of us. Don't be, don't talk like a donkey, right? Don't be annoying to people. Don't be loud, unnecessarily loud. Now, I mentioned here Luqman advice to his son 10 lessons. Why are they 8? Who will tell me? Where are the other 2? What do you guys think? You can write in chat because I have muted your apologies for the rowdiness that happened earlier. Anything that comes to mind. Why are they 8 and not 10? Where are the other 2? I mentioned it. Who can tell me? You can write in chat. These are eight. I have mentioned ten. Where are the other two? Okay, there's something in chat. No clue. <laughs> so basically, number six is three in one. Establish prayer, always enjoy in the right and forbid evil, and be patient in tough times. These are three. So if you make it one point, then two come out and it becomes ten. The reason why I had to join them was because it is mentioned these require determination. So these three specifically. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning they require determination. So I had to club them together. But if you separate them, the total will become 10. And indeed, the three, as we discussed, do require determination. Jazakumullah khairan. Moving forward very quickly. We lost some time today. So I will now try to move fast. We have 15 minutes, inshallah. Alam taraw anna allaha sakhara lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi ardi wa asbaga alaykum ni'amahu and uh, do not you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjected to you whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth it is created for us and, and amply bestowed upon you his bounties apparent and hidden there are certain things certain benefits that we get from this world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us knowledge and science has revealed it to us but there are a lot of things that are benefiting us that even we don't know of Yet, science is about to find and discover. And discoveries are happening as advancement in the field of science and technology is happening. But this is being revealed step by step to us. There are a lot of things that have been revealed to us that are helping us in this world and a lot of things that are yet to be found. 
ومن الناس من يجادل في الله بغير علم ولا هدى ولا كتاب منير but of the people is he who disputes about allah subhanahu wa taala without knowledge and not guidance and not an enlightening book there are people who are just arguing and they are just passing comments without any knowledge so for us it is very important to build our knowledge before and by the way whenever we feel like oh why is this why is this happening and how come like this in islam and all of this the first thing we need to tell ourselves is this is our lack of knowledge so please build knowledge first build your knowledge and then have passing comments until you have that knowledge or maybe you are reading something you don't understand that's your lack of understanding the knowledge is complete moving forward wa iza qila lahum wa iza qila lahum muttabi'u ma anzala allah qalu bal nattabi'u ma wajadna alayhi aba'ana and when it is said to them follow what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed they say nay we will follow what we found on our forefathers so when you tell tell, tell someone that this is the right thing to do or this is islam they say no 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 we'll only follow what our forefathers told us there are lots of practices within muslims within muslim families in a lot of countries muslim countries where there are wrong practices taken or created afterwards but people say no we will continue to do them because that's how we found that's how our parents were doing it or that's how we saw our family doing it but that's not right awalau kana shaytana shaytanu yaduhum ila azab as-sa'ir even if shaitan was to call them to the punishment of the uh, if, even if shaitan was to call them to the punishment of the blade so it's like yes so the point is they are blindly following their forefathers and it's like you know if it leads them to hell fire they will continue to follow so while shaitan we know that who has put them on the wrong path who's misguiding them who's trying to instill these whispers is shaitan and this probably happened at the time of their forefathers now they are blindly following their forefathers and they are saying we don't worry about it so we we will just follow our forefathers even if it takes us to hell fire so if it is a work of shaitan so they are not trying to correct themselves this is the biggest issue when you go and you talk to people that this is the right thing to do the first thing they will say oh so you will tell us about islam ah okay so you think my mother was wrong you think your grandfather was wrong you think this person is wrong you think that person is wrong he has such a long beard how come the you know the this is this guy is wrong no anyone can be wrong if they are not following the guidance if they are not if something is not in the hadith or sunnah any practice if it is not in the hadith and the sunnah of the holy prophet and of course if it is not in quran chances are it is wrong so this is our filter the best filter and check for us is if some practice any practice is in the holy quran and is in the in the hadith or the sunnah of the holy prophet and if it was practiced by the companions then of course it should be right but if it is not then chances are that it is created and it's something that was invented later wa may yuslim wajhahu ila allah wa huwa muhsinun faqad istamsaka bil urwatil wusqa and whoever submits his face to allah subhanahu wa taala while he is a good doer you start following the guidance then indeed he has grasped the hand hold that is most trustworthy hold the rope of allah subhanahu wa taala which is the quran which is the guidance so whenever you turn yourself towards allah subhanahu wa taala whenever you turn yourself towards guidance now you have a solid protector now you don't need to worry fa ila allahi aqibatul amur umur and to allah subhanahu wa taala is the end of the matter so imagine you know the entity who will give you success who is a judge who is a provider who will reward you or he may punish you so if you hold on to them and if you follow their guidance then chances are you will be successful so this is what allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that at the end all matters are returning to allah subhanahu wa taala wa man kafara fala yahzunka kuf uh, kufru and whoever disbelieves let not grieve you his disbelief so now this is a message going to the messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam that if somebody is disbelieving it is for themselves ilaina marjuhum farunabbihum bima amilu to us is their return and we will inform them then of what they did let them follow disbelief they will return to allah subhanahu wa taala and then they will realize the reality and truth will be revealed to them in allah alimum bizat sudur indeed allah subhanahu wa taala is the knower of what is in their breast what are they hiding what are they 
the secrets that they are keeping in their chest, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Numatte'uhum qalilam, qalilan summa nazatarruhum ila azabin ghaliz. We grant them enjoyment for a little while. They can have fun. They can fulfill their desires. They can do corruption. They can do killings. They can do whatever they want for a little while. Then we will force them to a severe punishment. There is a time that a wrongdoer is given a stipulated time to come back and ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they don't do it, then they go further into that uh, bad deed and wrong path and then they face the severe punishment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, let them enjoy for a little moment. And if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they will surely say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Allah uh, say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bal aktharuhum la ya'lamun. But most of them do not know. Again, a point that is telling us only a few people are on the right path. This point again establishes the fact that only few people know and only few. So it doesn't matter if you are a born Muslim or you are out of the billions who are Muslim and everything. You have to be a good practicing Muslims. A person who tries to understand the guidance, who tries to see what am I supposed to do, what am I not supposed to do, and takes actions in his, in his life. Like we read earlier, in the first ayah or the second ayah, that this is a book of wisdom, knowledge plus action. So we have to uh, be amongst those few people who are wise and who are taking actions. Because most of them, Allah SWT is saying in the Quran, they do not know. Lillahi maafi samawati wal earth. To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. In Allah huwal ghani yul hamid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of any need. He doesn't need anyone. He doesn't need anybody's praise. He doesn't need any worship. Whatever we do is for our own sake. He is the only one who is praiseworthy, who is al hamid. Walau anna ma fil ardi min shajaratin aqlamu wal bahru yamudduhu min baadihi. And if whatever is in the earth of the trees were pens, if you were to cut down, chop down all the trees of the earth and make pens of all the wood that you find, you make pens. And the sea to add to it after it seven seas. So they take all the sea and convert it into ink and take another seven seas and convert them into ink. Then the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be exhausted. This is the vastness of knowledge. This is the vastness of the kalam or kalimatullah, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah Azizun Hakim. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almighty, all wise. Ma khalkukum wala ba'tukum illa kanafsiyum wahida. Not is your creation and not is your selection, but as a single soul. So the point is that uh, um, if you look at the all the creation entirely, or if you look at the single person or a single soul, we cannot, we don't have any control on it. So we cannot even have a sing, we don't even have a single, we cannot even create or resurrect a single soul. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing all of this. In Allah Samyum Basir, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearer, all seerer. Alam tara anna Allah. Uh, you do not you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes the night into the day and causes to enter the day into the night who is making this shift and he has subjected the sun and the moon the way they are all placed even if the sun comes closer to the earth by a degree or two degree or if the moon comes degree to a two degree the entire system will it will cause a huge disruption so who placed them in this specific positions? Millions of miles away, yet placed in specific positions. Moving each for a term appointed and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you all and he's aware about what you do. The movement of the solar system, the planets, the galaxies, they're all moving in a certain way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even revealed that the day and the night is happening because of the movement. Imagine, was it known like uh, 1400 years ago when this was being revealed? Now science has confirmed rotation, revolving, planets, sun, gravitational forces, the distances and how each degree is important and 
everything that is being mentioned here is now getting verified from science. This is again a, a, a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقُّ That is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. So the truth only gets confirmed over time. All the truth that is mentioned in Quran, all the miracles that are mentioned in, in Quran, all the scientific facts that are mentioned in Quran are getting confirmed over time. There is not a single fact mentioned in Quran that was negated by science. That is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. The start of this ayah, very, very important. This is the truth. This is a true revelation, which is why science only confirms all of these facts. And that what they call him besides all is falsehood. Everything that they are trying to fabricate, there is this God, that God, and this, and I don't believe, and I am an atheist, and I am a this, and I am that. All of that is falsehood. And that Allah, he is the most high, the most great. He is above everything that they try to associate with him. Alam tara annal fulka tajri fil bahri. Do not you see that the ship sail through the sea by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he may show you of his signs. Now I was just thinking when I read this ayah, one thing that hit me is if you look at it, air, the one that we breathe and it blows and it helps us in a way um, and it's invisible. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this air in which there is a composition of gases. We have oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen and this and that and that. And there are some other gases defined as other gases. We don't even know what they are and you know what their function is. I mean, science is catching up. But the point is, it's invisible. It's amazing. Imagine if air was visible and it was like a smoke. We couldn't even see each other. Yet we would need it, right? So it exists in its form. It can be felt like with fan or with a sea when the, when the ships are moving, when they're sailing with the wind or when the airplane is flying and trying to put pressure of the wind or when the cars are going forward. There's a very important use of wind which is all around us but it's in it's invisible so that we can see through it and we can conduct our lives even if you just look at the air or you may want to call it wind or atmosphere and the fact that it's visible is an amazing sign and a beautiful creation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it, it was a, a a colored gas or something then imagine how we would even go about it so there is something that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in its form it's helping us in an amazing way. It has a composition. There are multiple gases. They have their own uses, carbon dioxide, oxygen, um, you know, carbon dioxide inhaled by plants and exhaled oxygen. For us, we inhale oxygen. We take out carbon dioxide. All of this system, this beautiful composition of air, the beautiful ways that we are all using it, the fact that it is invisible, this is in itself a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to believe an um, amazing creation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, in that, surely are signs for everyone who is patient and who is grateful. And when covers them a wave like canopies, they call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being sincere to him in religion. When they are in a tough situation, when they are in the sea, Waves rise up, a storm comes, they start to plead to Allah SWT, please save us. Palamma najahum ilal barri, famin hum muqtasid. But when he delivers them to the land, then among them some are moderate. Wama yaj hadu bi ayatina illa kullu khattarin kafur. And not deny our signs except every traitor who is ungrateful. So once they are in tough situation, in the middle of the storm, in the sea, and this is just an example, you can take it in any challenge in life when people are in a tough challenge, when they are in a tough situation, they're like, oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves us. That's when they remember, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please take me out of this uh, situation and I'll be a great Muslim and I will do it. The moment that happens, the moment that situation is overturned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they go back to their old ways. These are ungrateful traitors. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defining them. Last two ayahs for today. Man, oh mankind, fear your Lord and fear a day not can avail a father for a son. No one will be able to help each other. A father will not be able to help a son and son will not be able to 
help the father on the day of judgment. Wala mau ludun hova jazin au wali wali di he shaya. And not a son he can avail for his father anything. So a father will not be able to help the son. A son will not be able to help a father. This example is coming because this is a very strong relation of a father son. And during this life, they help each other. When the son is young and weak and everything, the father is supporting him. And when the father becomes older, then the son is supporting him. Generally, this is a very strong relationship. And people used to be proud of their son and everything. Allah SWT is giving an example. On that day, a father will not be able to help the son. And a son will not be able to help the father. Inna wa'ad Allah al فَلَا تَعُزَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَعُزَّنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَفُورِ Indeed, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true. So let not deceive you the life of the world and let not deceive you about Allah the deceiver. There are lots of deceivers in this world. They would want to take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would want you to fail the test of life. Failing the test of life meaning that you are given a guidance, do good, um, and abstain yourself, stop yourself from evil. They will drag you into evil. They will stop you from doing good. They will make fun of you. Why are you are a Muslim? <laughs> look at you. I mean, look at your get up and all of this. So all of this, um, uh, uh, so the, the what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling is, is al-haq and let not the life of the world or other people deceive you. Don't get into the deception of everyone is doing it. Oh, why? I should also do it. They are having so much fun. Why am I being restricted? They, the, nobody is stopping them. Look at my friends. They are doing this. How come my parents are so strict? Or why am I asking to be, why am I asked to be hold myself while others are enjoying their life? So this is all deception against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last ayah for today. In Allah in the hu ilmusa. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with him is the knowledge of the hour. He knows when the day of judgment will be established. Until then, all of the human beings, all of mankind, have a time to uh, return back, ask for forgiveness and correct their ways. He sends down the rain. And he knows what is inside the wombs when a baby is about to be born. Before that, he knows his gender. Is it a male or a female? And not knows any soul what it will earn tomorrow. What will come and what will they face tomorrow? All of these things, if you see, is the knowledge of ghaib. This is something that is knowledge of the future. This is something that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. The knowledge of the hour, the day of judgment. He sends down the rain whenever he pleases. He knows what is in the womb of the pregnant females, if they'll be male or female. And not knows any soul what it will earn tomorrow. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسُمْ din tamut. And not knows any soul in what land it will die. You don't know when you will die, where you will die. In Allah Alimun Khabir. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware and he's all knowing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything and he's aware about everything. This marks the end of today's lesson. Alhamdulillah. And we complete our study of Surah Luqman. Very quickly, we will go through the actions. Number one, we went through what is the definition of of successful good doers. Those who will be successful, who are muhsineen, who are the good doers. They establish the prayer five times. They give zakat, they help the poor and the needy. And they believe firmly in the hereafter. And very important point, the meaning of firmly, when you believe in firmly in the hereafter, then you are always conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him happy, to please him. Because when you are in love with someone and when you believe, first you have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning loving means you don't want to offend him. You want to do whatever he likes. You want to get away from or move away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like. So these are the people who are successful, good doers, successful, muhsini. Then, number two, who will get humiliating punishment? These are the people who spread false tales and turns away arrogantly from the guidance when it is shared to them, when the ayahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shared with them, and they make fun of the guidance. So these are the people who are, who will face a very humiliating punishment on the day of judgment. Then we went through the 10 lessons of um, Hazrat Luqman that he shared with his son. And these are, so Luqman was, um, uh, is believed to be uh, a, an ancient uh, person who was very wise. And there are certain lessons that he gave 
to his son that we have uh, that have been captured in Surah Luqman from ayah number 12 until ayah number 19 that we went through today. Alhamdulillah. We will quickly go through this. Uh, summarize them. Number one, be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is free from all needs. When we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is only for our benefit. Don't associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is shit. So if you associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's shit. And you're almost out of Islam. Always be respectful to your parents. This you have to do always, regardless of how they treat you. Be obedient unless they go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. The only point where you cannot, you, you don't have to follow them is if they ask you to do something against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance or the hadith and sunnah of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Otherwise, you're supposed to follow them. Even in that case, when they ask you to go against the guidance, you don't have to follow it, but you have to remain uh, respectful and kind to them all the time. Follow the path of people who follow guidance. Follow the good people. All deeds will be held accountable, even the size of a mustard seed. The size of the mustard seed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you cannot even hide anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all deeds, even of that size, will be brought in front of us on the day of judgment. Then there are three instructions that are combined in one. And these require determination. So number one, establishing prayer five times a day. Always enjoin right and forbid evil, meaning do the right thing and encourage people to do the right things and stop and refrain them from doing bad things or evil things and be patient in tough times. These three things require determination and we discuss them in detail in the class. Um, don't be arrogant. Allah SWT doesn't like self-conceited boaster. Self-conceited boaster, we discussed it. It means someone full of himself. He's saying, oh, I'm the best and I do this and all of that and he's exaggerating stuff and talking about it. And he feels that he's superior from others. Don't be like that. Be moderate in your pace and lower your voice. Uh, voice. Worse of voices is of that of a donkey. And we said that these are eight. However, six is uh, three in one. So if you take number six, establish prayer, always enjoying good, uh, uh, enjoying the right and forbid evil and be patient in tough times. These are three actions joined in one because in the ayah itself, it was mentioned that these require determination. These three are the toughest ones. And of course, we have to follow all the 10 lessons. So these were the uh, amazing 10 lessons that came from a very wise man, Luqman, as an advice for his son, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala captured in the Holy Quran until the end of time for us to follow. This marks the end of today's lesson. Alhamdulillah, apologies, my apologies for the disruption that we faced in the class in the middle. Um, there were some uh, people who came in and they tried to disrupt the class. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give guidance to all of us. Um, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdi ka ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru ka wa tubu ilayk. Purity belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all praise be to him. Purity belongs to you, O Allah, and all praise be to you. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides you. I beg forgiveness from you and I repent before you. There is a hand raised. I will unmute you, Usain, and uh, then you can speak. Go ahead. I want to ask a question. Yes, go ahead. So it is not the uh, no. Uh, what do you say? It's not. It's not concerning the the uh, the session, but it's just a question. Um. So I was I was arguing with a guy, and then and then I told him that. I, say that I cannot hear you. Can you speak a bit louder, please? Yeah, I was once uh arguing with a guy. Uh, around the equation, and then he, and then uh, I said that uh, there's no, there's no uh, like mistakes in the Quran. Then he uh, brought up uh, one, one uh, thing point, which said that the Quran says that uh, the sun and moon are in a like orbit. I don't know how to reply to that. So can you explain it? Sure. So basically, when you say that both sun and the moon are evolving. So earlier it was believed by science because, you know, science is moving step by step. So the earlier thing was that sun is static and all of the uh, other planets are evolving around it. So this was confirmed by uh, science, right? Now, if you look at the latest studies, what is being told by science as well is even the sun and the solar system that we believe to have like all the planets around the sun revolving in orbit and sun is static. But Quran says that both are evolving. And now what they have learned is that even this entire galaxy and the sun, it's uh, sorry, the solar system and the sun in the middle itself, they are also moving. So even the sun is moving, but they are moving all together uh, and revolving. So it has been proven. If you 
Um, if you want, you can WhatsApp me and I'll try to share the evidence um, uh, with you as well. And we can find it and we can uh, uh, we can answer. But this is for sure that all miracles and all scientific facts mentioned in the Quran have been confirmed by science. And those which are yet to be confirmed by science is a lack of science. And they will be revealed to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the right time, at the appropriate time. Okay. okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, it uh, does. And also, Excellent. I also brought up another point. Sure, tell uh, me. So you know how in the Quran it says, uh, like, the the universe was created in seven, uh, six days. Sorry. Um, but like in science, they, they say it's, it was formed in nine like billion years. So I didn't know how to respond to that. No, the thing is this, to be honest, the nine billion years theory of science, the evolution theory of science, all of these, they are based on certain estimates and judgments. Um, and they have been refuted. So there is no firm evidence. And when there is no firm evidence, then we cannot confirm. So, and the other thing that I wanted to mention as well is when a dimension of time is mentioned, seven days, even some of the Islamic scholars, they believe this is not really, this cannot, they may not be the day as we know. It's just for us to, 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 to understand and perceive. The dimension of time can be completely different for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way it is being defined. Like, for example, um, sometimes it is mentioned in thousands, the numbers are quoted in thousands in terms of reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. These quantities, these time dimensions, they are just as a reference point. Now, the exact determination is not even needed and it's not even a point of debate. It is just being told to us to understand the size of things, to, to make us understand. And to be honest, a lot of the things that we have been told in terms of the heavens and um, you know the partners in heavens, the who's and all of these things, they have been explained to us in a way that we can relate. But what will be the actual thing for example, the punishment of the fire of the hell. What will be the actual thing? We don't even know it. And we uh, and we cannot even uh, determine it because we cannot even um, imagine it. So the way it have been, they have been explained to us is in words and ways that we can comprehend and understand. So we have to understand the wisdom behind. We have to understand the logic behind. We cannot be bogged down into, oh, was it six days? Was it seven days? How many hours was it? This is not the point of the discussion. The point for me in that in that uh, point is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the universe and who created everything. He is the master of everything. This to me means I he is my creator. That means he's telling me do this, do, do not do this. He knows. He has written my user manual in the form of Quran and I will follow it. Now the details, what is science proving, not proving, this is something that you know. And eventually when science goes to that level, it will prove. Um, but right now, these things are just an estimation from our side. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes. Excellent. There are certain things written in chat. I will just check. Uh, the Quran never said that the earth was created in seven days. Yes, I think we can. Uh, we can see the Quran asserts that the universe is in. So Shahroz is writing. Quran asserts that the universe is current from has been created in six periods. Know that Arabic word for days. Yom also means periods. Yes. So this is what we discuss. It it is not necessarily days jazakallah khair and shahroz so this marks the end of today's lesson assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my dear brothers